Hi, and welcome to Iowa Soybean Association's The State of Soy. I'm your host, Katie James. I'm reporting to you from none other than my own backyard in central Iowa. The rise of COVID-19 has changed the way we all do business, including how we host and share The State of Soy. But just like your farm and business, we roll on, eager to serve and driven to deliver results for Iowa soybean farmers. In this edition of The State of Soy, we gain insights from true Soybean Hall of Famers, past Iowa presidents of the American Soybean Association, gathered for the organization's 100th anniversary celebration held at Commodity Classic in San Antonio. Speaking of soy leaders, we'll hear from the CEOs of the American Soybean Association, United Soybean Board, and U.S. Soybean Export Council on topics trending in the national and global world of soy. And enjoy a conversation with Joe Mershman, President and CEO of Mershman Seeds, as he touches on the importance of quality seed, freedom to operate, and the work of the Iowa Soybean Association. And we'll close with an intimate look at the world of calving and lambing, captured through the lens of ISA's Joe Murphy. Leading is never simple, but these farmers make it look easy. We begin today with some of the best farmer leaders I've gotten the privilege to work with, Ron Heck, Ray Gasser, and Marlon Jorgensen. We caught up with them at Commodity Classic in San Antonio, Texas. These farmers may take unique approaches to their operations, but they all have one thing in common, tireless devotion to improving the soybean industry. The state of soy was at Commodity Classic in San Antonio for the American Soybean Association's 100th anniversary celebration. We're continually inspired by these farmer leaders, and you will be too. We have 24 past presidents here going back more than 30 years. So we've been talking about the milestones, uh, talking about uh, we remember when the U.S. government didn't even keep track of soybean exports because they really didn't matter. It's just uh, uh, a long trip down memory lane and so much fun working with the people here that, that put it all together. Some of us went through some pretty tough struggles back in the years, back in the day, and uh, it's kind of fun to relive all of them and, uh, and then check up on each other, see how things are going with them and their wives and their families. And, you know, lots of change since 89, 90, you know, so it's kind of fun just to get reacquainted. Being a uh, partner with, uh, with so many great leaders that are, that are here today and, you know, that, that have made a difference not only for our soybean industry, but for American agriculture in general. And soybeans have been really a great story for a hundred years now. The presidents have been talking about all the stuff that we did together. Uh, great projects don't happen during a one-year term. So you work with your friends over a period of 10 years or 20 years or, or 50 years for some of these projects. Obviously, somebody back in the beginning had a vision, the need for another crop, a soybean crop started to promote that. If that hadn't started, we, we in the United States could be, still be, in the Midwest at least, could still be a monoculture of corn. You know, their ideas, their initiative way back then are probably key to having the robust soybean uh, economy that we have today. A lot of giants in the industry, and you know, you just go back and you name some of them from Iowa, Merlin Groot, uh, Ted Hooser, Norm Chambers, uh, got together and said, you know, we need to do some things to continue to promote our product, but at the same time make other people more aware of our product in the, in the government circles. Farmers by nature are uh, pretty self-reliant, but there was no safety net under the soybean price until the 90 Farm Bill. The president right before me was James Lee Adams from Georgia. The president before him was uh, Wayne Bennett from Arkansas. So under Wayne Bennett, we filed a 301 complaint against the European Union for unfair trade practices. Then comes James Lee, and the group decided we ought to move to a national soybean checkoff. And then the third thing that we did was we established soybeans as a program crop. Hard to believe now, but soybeans were not part of the farm program before the 2002 Farm Bill. Uh, I was president in 2003 and 4. But as a legislative chairman, I worked on that before I was president. And then uh, a month after I wasn't president, I was, I was chairman then, Congress passed and uh, President Bush passed the uh, biodiesel tax incentive. So that was the year after I was president. So uh, maybe I didn't do much the year I was president, but we all worked together and got these, these two important milestones done. I was president for about two months when we finally got the 2014 
uh, farm bill passed, you know, and it, it had taken three and a half years to get that done. I was on the on the farm bill committee, but uh, you know, as a, as a new president, I got to take all the credit for, for for everyone who did all the hard work for three and a half years. You know, we started out as a pretty small group at the Fouts Farm in Indiana a hundred years ago, and that was a really progressive and forward-thinking group of, of farmers and, and industry leaders. And I think we still have that today. And we will always advocate, you know, for what's best for agriculture and for what's best for, for the land that we get to farm. I see soybeans as a, one of the world's most important sources of protein and a good source of oil. Uh, we're going to continue to expand and grow markets. We're going to continue to learn how to grow them better. I'm really proud to, to see a, a movement toward, toward environmentalism and, and you know we have solutions for climate issues that agriculture isn't so much a problem but we can solve a lot of the issues sequestering carbon, cleaning up the water, you know creating a, a, a food for people that is nutritious and helpful and then some of those invisible ingredients that we see biodiesel, uh, asphalt now, you know plastics all those kind of things that are naturally friendly and much better than, than taking some of the oil from the ground and, and using it. And our checkoff has been a big part of that. And ASA you know, uh, brought about the opportunity to have a national checkoff and we're really proud how that's evolved in the job they're doing. We continue to be one of the leaders in soybean production, but just producing it isn't enough. And the state of Iowa has taken a real active leadership role in promoting that product, in researching new uses, advocating for soybeans in, in Washington, D.C., and indeed around the world. People understand that, they respect it. We hope we continue to be a leader in the soybean industry, and we think it's for the good of all soybean production. Soybeans wouldn't be the incredible success story without the organization behind them. The success of U.S. agriculture over the last 50 years has because soybeans replaced oats, hay, and government programs. U.S. agriculture is prosperous today because of soybeans, and we're going to keep working on that and make it better. Coming up next on The State of Soy, we're chatting with more soybean visionaries. United Soybean Board CEO Polly Ruland and U.S. Soybean Export Council CEO Jim Sutter. This edition of The State of Soy sponsored in part by Ag Processing Incorporated, AGP, a trusted partner of the soybean farmer in the procuring, processing, marketing, and transportation of oil seeds, grains, and related products. Farm Credit Services of America, dedicated to financing agriculture, the entire organization from the people to the ag-friendly products, services, and support works to help producers succeed. Farm Credit Services of America, agriculture works here. People's Company, their global perspective grounded in rural farming roots and a drive to continually innovate is what makes People's Company one of the nation's leading providers of land brokerage, land management, land appraisal, and land investment services. And by Bayer. Bayer, shaping agriculture by challenging the impossible. Whether it's livestock feed or soy-based foods and beverages, it's easy for conversations about protein to become debates. But as the state of soy discovers, there's a healthier conversation to be had. After all, people throughout the world need more protein, a demand soybean farmers are ready to fill. When we put protein first, it's a win for everyone, including farmers' investment in the soy checkoff. What we're trying to do with uh, Choose U.S. Protein First campaign is to make sure that the U.S. protein category is first choice internationally for protein. And we believe at United Soybean Board that protein as a category is a pre-competitive issue. In other words, be it plant protein or animal protein, uh, U.S. protein best serves the world through sustainability, through quality, through reliability. And that all protein farmers in the U.S. should come together to promote U.S. protein as uh, the preferred choice internationally. We had our initial trade mission ever to Nigeria in April of 2019. It's going to take some time to develop that market, but we see that as the future. There's big populations, low consumption levels, and rising economic situation. Egypt, Pakistan, Bangladesh, 
all sort of in a similar part of the world, and all a similar story. They've had rapid growth in their poultry production sectors, and they need soybean meal to be able to supply that and to be able to provide the nutrition for those chickens. And the people in the country want cooking oil. So again, they're importing soybeans, crushing them locally, and using the products locally. The truth is that internationally, the need for protein is going to grow exponentially by 2050 and beyond. Uh, we have increasing disposable incomes in many countries. We know that people spend more money on protein, be it plant or animal, as their disposable incomes increase. So we believe that the uh, potential for U.S. protein as a category is enormous, and we believe that we can take advantage of that potential better if we talk about U.S. protein uh, in a pre-competitive and categorical kind of way internationally. As economies improve in these countries, one of the first things they do with a little more money is spend it on their diet. So they want more meat and they want more cooking oil. I think if our farmers can hang in there, continue to produce soybeans sustainably, so we can go around the world and talk about that as a competitive advantage, I think we'll start to see things getting better. When we say we're sustainable, people want to know, well, prove it, and how do you measure that? So we're working hard on data streams and understanding how data streams can help us measure our sustainability and sustainability and how we get even better at it, how we walk the walk by getting better at it, and how we are better at telling our story or sharing our story with the world. We're starting to work even harder on disseminating the information that we generate to make sure that that information gets out there and is actually useful to the industry uh, and provides value for the checkoff. We're very excited about these soy excellence centers that we're going to be developing. And we're, we're doing this as a result of receiving ATP funds. So as part of the trade mitigation program that USDA put together, there was an opportunity for organizations like ours to request, apply for, and request funding. Think about a virtual learning center to allow us to put on steroids the programs that we have historically done by sending some people from the U.S. or other countries to, to a new market to teach them about poultry production or feed milling or trading, those kind of things. We're going to set up a center with a university or with some other learning institution and we're just going to run more and more of these courses so we'll be able to educate more and more people. We've started one in, in Egypt, next will be Nigeria, but it'll be regional for that West Africa area. Then we'll do one in Thailand that'll reach Southeast Asia and the Asia subcontinent. And then we'll do one likely in Ecuador for the Americas region. And I just think these are going to allow us to really accelerate uh, teaching people, uh, educating them about how to use soy effectively, and ultimately that'll grow demand. It's a changing landscape and a dyna dynamic landscape. We are working on a new long-range strategic plan right now, and we hope to make that strategic plan not just a five-year anchor like we've had before, let's anchor some ideas and let's work on it for five years, but a more evergreen type of plan where we can assess every year about the changing and dynamic environment that is U.S. agriculture right now. We think soy protein is a great thing. We think it's a great thing both for humans and for the animal customers that we have. I mean, 92% of U.S. soy goes into animals. We know that when we feed animals and then sell animals overseas, it adds the value uh, to the bean and to the animal industry here in this country. You know, 60% of the soy that gets produced goes into international markets. We're out there trying to help make sure we're differentiating, building a preference, and ensuring market access. Up next on the State of Soy, we hear from Joe Mershman, President and CEO of Mershman Seeds. Hope. It's a hard thing to hold on to in the face of adversity. But this, it's where you belong. Keep moving forward. Prove to the world you have what it takes. So the next time you feel defeated, don't forget. That grit, that determination, it got you here. Remember, you were made for this. Progress is a human invention. We look at our world and we imagine how to make it better. That's the power of human ingenuity. We can redefine what's possible. At Bayer, we're shaping the future of agriculture. Like farms where all life grows together. It's not impossible, it's progress. The 
Iowa Soybean Association works closely with our industry partners. These partnerships strengthen the industry and offer diverse perspectives benefiting soybean farmers and their on-farm decision making. The State of Soy caught up with Joe Mershman of Mershman Seeds at a recent ISA meeting in Des Moines. Joe offers unique insights into the world of seed, bringing products to market and the importance of a strong Iowa Soybean Association. Joe also reminds us why farmers' dedication to feeding the world matters today more than ever. You know, during this uh, trade war we had with China, you know, the American Soybe Soybean Association, I'm sure the Iowa Soybean Association was putting a lot of resources in developing new markets. We're going to keep those markets. Then we got China potentially coming back in to buy more. So we got, we're working on that demand side. And then on the, on the cost side, you know, we've got more competition coming into place with Enlist E3 and also with Liberty Link GT27 to give farmers additional choices. So it, it's always been told to me, if you run a business, you want to deal as high revenue as you possibly can and as low cost because then that gives you money to invest in your operation to make your operation better and even more efficient. So I think 2020, we've seen a change from 2019 and even 2018. And it's all because all the stakeholders are working together to bring this competition in the marketplace and also open up new markets for our products. Every decision we made is based on the philosophy that my father, when he started the business back in 1954, he said you have to have the farmer win first and then we will be able to get what we need to, to invest in our business and make it better. And we've always taken the approach in our business as we make profits, we put it back into the business. This past year and this coming year, we're gonna spend over $6 million on renovations to our seed plant to improve the quality because farmers expect perfect beans. We're a seedsman by heart. In other words, I consider myself a second generation seedsman. And believe it or not, when we get 100% germ from Iowa State University Seed Science Center, that becomes like a national championship, or a state championship at least, in our, in our plant. We put them up. We, this year we've had eight so far. Now 99s are pretty common, but 100 is very hard because soybean seed coats are very hard to handle and you always have at least one plant that's an abnormal or doesn't germ. So we're run by seedsmen and most of the independent companies are and they have a real close connection to their customers, the farmers. Nothing makes a seedsman happier than to see a perfect stand and a perfect yield. And we don't answer necessarily to Wall Street. We answer to our customers. So we ask our customers, you know, who does your seed company work for? Does he work for you? And it could be a national brand, they work for them, but there is certain restrictions that kind of hand tie some of the major companies when it comes to what they can do and what they can't do. Independent companies, such as our company, can move quickly. We will not sign any three-year agreements with anybody because we see this industry changing very rapidly. As I tell our salespeople when they go out to sell, it's hand-to-hand -hand combat right now when it comes to talking to farmers. There's on average six seed companies that call on every farmer and they all have a similar story or the same story. We're the best, we got the lowest price. So you have to in some way add value to that, that message and that value has to be additional yield because every farmer that I've talked to is concerned about profitability. They're concerned about the future. They're concerned about regulations. They're concerned about being able to pass the farm down to the next generation. And you, that as you work for the farmer in the, in the Soybean Association, are working very hard in a lot of those areas and we are very appreciative of it because, you know, we're, we're fighting alligators every day and we don't have time to drain the swamp where you can focus on one or two of those alligators for us and really help us out. And that's why farmers need to support their associations because, you know, the legislative work that you do is so critical. You know, the lobbying that you do to make sure that the tax laws and all the things that benefit farmers because everybody knows there's fewer and fewer farmers, less and less of them, so their voice is smaller and smaller. So the only way we can get our work, get word out there is that we work together as an industry to overcome some of these problems so we can create competition that there is profitability, not just for the farmer, but for the seed company and the major manufacturers of these traits and genetics. We have to pay attention to the East Coast and West Coast and what their values are. If the consumer wants their food grown a certain way, that's fine. I think there's not a farmer out there that will not grow it the way they want, but they have to be compensated. We're not gonna be able to, to feed the masses at a low cost without innovation, without herbicides, without traits and genetics and GMOs. So that's the big conflict that we have. So the poorest of the poor are the ones that always do not benefit when some of the decisions are made by affluent 
folks that have plenty of money and can have things done a certain way. That's okay, but we also have to worry about, you know, about the poorest of the poor. And our and the you know, American farmer loves the challenge of trying to feed the world. In other words, there's nothing that drives a farmer more than to do a good job from the uh, standpoint of the environment and, and yield. Speaking of feeding the world, one man knows how vital not only soybean farmers are, but also the policies that impact them. We'll hear from American Soybean Association CEO Ryan Finley when we come back. This edition of the State of Soy sponsored in part by Ag Processing Incorporated, AGP, a trusted partner of the soybean farmer in the procuring, processing, marketing, and transportation of oil seeds, grains, and related products. Farm Credit Services of America, dedicated to financing agriculture, the entire organization from the people to the ag-friendly products, services, and support works to help producers succeed. Farm Credit Services of America, agriculture works here. People's Company, their global perspective grounded in rural farming roots and a drive to continually innovate is what makes People's Company one of the nation's leading providers of land brokerage, land management, land appraisal, and land investment services. And by Bayer. Bayer, shaping agriculture by challenging the impossible. Farmers know the decisions made on Capitol Hill have some of the biggest impacts on their operation. Leveraging non-checkoff dollars, the American Soybean Association is at the policy forefront, advocating for the soybean farmer a thousand miles away from the farm field. What we do is focus on policy from the grassroots up. And this is the beginning of that process where our farmers have a conversation over, over the course of the week at Commodity Classic. And it's states submitting recommendations, they get together in caucuses, chew over ideas. There's a subcommittee process where farmers from all over the U.S. get together and, and discuss their differences, really work on the nuances of the policy, and then it culminates with the delegate session where they get together and they put it all together into our resolutions document that guides our policy focus for the rest of the year. A lot of discussion on trade, that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Looking at China and making sure that we're, we hold them accountable with phase one, but also a lot of forward-looking discussion to say India has over a billion people. How do we engage with that country? And not just engage, but how do we lean in and establish a free trade agreement between the U.S. and India? So I think it's a lot of that type of discussion where we look behind us and say, what do we need to do to improve? And then we look forward and say, how do we build and go forward? Beyond trade, a lot of discussion about animal health I think the African swine fever issue in, in China certainly piqued the interest of a lot of farmers to say, how do we protect U.S. livestock? How do we make sure that not only do we protect it, but we grow it? Boy, it'd be awesome if we could grow soybeans, crush soybeans, feed animals, and ship animal protein out from the U.S. And that begins by making sure what we have here is protected. In general, some discussion on infrastructure. How do we talk to legislators? How do we make sure that what we're advocating for makes sense? And, and how do we prioritize what we want to go after? And so I think there was throughout the week a lot of conversation on inland waterways, on roads and bridges, even a little bit on rural broadband to say, how do we continue to expand that? Overall, great discussion throughout the week. It was really good to hear from farmer leaders to make sure we're on the right track. It was a great celebration this week. We had 24 past presidents join us this week, and what a way to celebrate, to go back all the way to 1980-81 and visit with the individuals whose shoulders we now stand on. We were able to celebrate that past and just kind of walk through what we've experienced over the last couple of decades. From a visual standpoint, we had archived a lot of video footage, a lot of photos over the last 100 years. We saw those throughout the week. We saw them on display on the trade show floor. And what a cool way to kind of look back at what we have done over the last 100 years. Starting the soy checkoff, starting an international marketing program, starting an office in China, in Taiwan, in Germany, and, and being able to look at the state soybean associations and when they started, we've become known around the world. It's just remarkable. 
but also to pivot and to look forward to say, boy, if we've done that, what are we doing for the next 10 years, for the next 50, or for the next 100, for the next soy century? What are we going to be focused on? And I think it certainly continues to be trade. It certainly continues to be other uses. A lot of talk around biodiesel as we look forward. And, and I also think it's the unknown. We don't know what else we're going to discover in the next 100 years and where this amazing commodity is going to go. Our president, Bill Gordon, is in the process of appointing a strategic planning committee and we will work on the next strategic plan from now through the end of the year. We will put that in front of the board of directors and it will go into effect October 1st of 2021. I do think that there's some areas where as an organization we can focus focus on some pillars, give us that strategic push and direction, but those will be the decisions that our farmer leaders make over the next few months. Coming up next on The State of Soy, we'll close with an intimate look at the world of calving and lambing, captured through the lens of ISA's Joe Murphy. Hope. It's a hard thing to hold on to in the face of adversity. But this, it's where you belong. Keep moving forward. Prove to the world you have what it takes. So the next time you feel defeated, don't forget. That grit, that determination, it got you here. Remember, you were made for this. Progress is a human invention. We look at our world and we imagine how to make it better. That's the power of human ingenuity. We can redefine what's possible. At Bayer, we're shaping the future of agriculture. Like farms where all life grows together. It's not impossible, it's progress. Whether it's trade wars, weather uncertainties, or even global pandemics, the pace of farming never slows down. And livestock farmers, the original social distancers, show us that life moves on no matter the challenge. Using the power of photography, ISA Communications Director Joe Murphy takes us to Milo, Albia, and Wilton. There, he meets up with Duane Onimus, Brian Reed, and Dave Walton, and offers a glimpse at the circle of life as only the farm can provide. 